Thank you, Vice Chancellor. The Honourable Philip Honeywood, Minister for Tertiary Education and Training. Honourable Andre Hermeyer, Member for Yan Yin. The Honourable Jim Plowman, Speaker of the Victorian Parliament, Member for Evelyn. The Honourable Lorraine Elliott, Member for Mural Bark. The Honourable Jeff Craig, Member for the Central Highlands. The Honourable Keith Hamilton, Shadow Minister for Tertiary Education. The Honourable Haddon Storey and the Honourable Joan Kerner, although I haven't seen her. Mr. Richard Longmore, Chief Commissioner, Shire, Shire of Yarra Ranges. Vice-Chancellor Ian Wallace, who gave me such a kind introduction. To uh, Ms. Murphy, uh, I too thank you for your blessing. Uh, Senator Kay Patterson. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good evening everybody and welcome to what is an exciting day for the Swinburne University of Technology. Almost 90 years ago in 1908, the founder of Swinburne University, George Swinburne, established the Eastern Suburbs Technical College. And if George Swinburne were here today, I'm sure he'd be proud as we are to see his vision come true. George Swinburne's dream was to provide appropriate education to the, to the people of the outer, outer eastern, eastern suburbs. Now the outer eastern suburbs in those days, of course, were Hawthorne. But the city of Melbourne has expanded through these intervening years and the college George Swinburne founded has been transformed to university status. The Swinburne region now extends from Paran in the inner suburbs to this stylish and dynamic Lilydale campus here in the outer eastern suburbs. What you see here today is a state-of-the-art university of technology. It's something of which we can all be truly proud. It's not just another university campus, it's an entirely new concept a one-of-a-kind where the entire learning environment has been completely re-evaluated. Of course, the focus of the campus is this breathtaking three-storey multi-purpose building complex, and this complex houses everything from computer laboratories, classrooms, and a library facility to lecture theatres, recreational facilities, and a bookshop. As you all know, this new campus is poised to greet its first intake of students in just a few days. Initially, degree programs will be offered in applied science, business and social science, as well as in tourism and enterprise management. But in addition to being a centre of learning, the new campus will play a major part in local community and business activities. It's an ideal location for conferences, concerts, public meetings, exhibitions, and many other community pursuits. And it's only fitting, given that the local community played such a significant role in the establishment of Swinburne at Lilydale. As we stand here today, it's important to remember that what's been established is a result of a great deal of effort by a great many people over a considerable length of time, as far back as the 1980s, concern was raised at the low level of participation in higher education from the Outer East. Studies revealed a variety of reasons for this. Not the least of these was the Outer East's distance from and the lack of access to the existing campuses several strategies to improve the delivery of tertiary education to the region were undertaken. And in 1984, the Institute of TAFE was established. Eastern TAFE has continued to provide very valuable TAFE education to the expanding market here. In 1989, Swinburne proactively began planning to provide for the higher education needs of the outer eastern region. It purchased the site of the former MDA Grammar School in Muralbark. But at the same time, a group of local citizens set up a planning group to lobby for a university to be established in the, in the region. 
Now, this planning group comprised educational, business, local government, and parliamentary representatives, and many of them are here today. Welcome. The group generated substantial community support for the development of a university campus in the region. In fact, the background documents on the establishment of the Lilydale campus reflect the participation of a very, very determined community indeed. The community was led by government and opposition politicians. In particular, our State Minister, Phil Honeywood, Rosemary Varty, Neil Pope, and his advisors of the time, Bill Shorten and Phil Standall. To this was added our university's very strong allegiance with the Lilydale Shire officers, and in particular, former Shire President Giz Marvin. The community drive also involved local school principals, notably Dr. Peter Harris, hi Peter, of Billanook, who chaired the planning group. Leading business and industry people also took an interest, as of course did the university's Vice-Chancellor, Ian Wallace and our many dedicated staff and students. After endless, endless meetings, petitions, discussions, submissions, and dreaded working party reports, the power of the people won through. And in, 18, in April 1991, State and Commonwealth Ministers agreed. Swinburne, together with the Outer Eastern Institute of TAFE, was the preferred option to take the leading role in the provision of higher education to the outer eastern suburbs. This leading provider status was a significant factor in the subsequent recognition of Swinburne as a university. It included a condition that educational programs be designed to focus on the requirements of the region. An example of this and of the close cooperative relationship between Swinburne and the outer eastern TAFE is the work currently underway to provide a dual qualification option for students. This dual option will not only allow the students to receive maximum benefit for their learning time, it will also allow them to maximize their employment opportunities. I've already mentioned the role of the local community in making this campus a reality. No, but on behalf of Swinburne, and I would also like specifically to thank the following. The Commonwealth Government for providing $9 million to undertake the development of the Lilydale campus, in addition to $1.3 million for computing infrastructure and regional networking. The Victorian Government for the provision of funds to, to purchase the Lilydale site, and I was told privately that it was probably more than the Commonwealth Go Government's contribution. Swinburne's Vice-Chancellor, Professor Ian Wallace, for his vision and for his tenacity. Our Director of Facilities and Services, Nick Zorbus, for his tireless work with the project construction team. And the Project Director, Stephen Murby,